a big goof. Oh, yeah, please do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How did you, from Montreal, decide you wanted to do this, and now you're in LA, and you know? Yes. It, sometimes I don't. I'm, I wake up and I think. What am, what am I doing here? Uh, I always wanted to be an actress ever since I was a child. And I used to sort of kick and scream and beg my parents. And they said, you know, when you're 18, you can do whatever you want. Just stay in school. You got to stay in school. <laughs> That's all they cared about. And I was really insistent. And there was a voiceover audition at the National Film Board, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Yes. And I was 12, and I said, I'm going. And my parents said, okay, you know, you can go. Well, but just you... stay in school, but you can yes, go. Yes, that's exactly. They were always, stay in school, stay in school. It was so imperative for them that yes. I get my college education. Mm -hmm. We were very concerned about that. So I went to this audition. I remember I had to sing Happy Birthday. That was the whole thing, because it was a voiceover. And I got the job. And I just started working in voiceovers from there. And started doing some commercials. I did local theater. I worked at the Centaur Theater. I did Shakespeare in the Park. And I just, as long as I balanced my schoolwork and my acting, you know, my parents were very supportive. I always say to people, everything you've ever heard about L.A. is true. You know? <laughs> the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, there's a lot of hiking, and you can be really healthy. And they do make movies there, and they do make television shows. Yes. And if that's what you want to do, it's a great place it is to the, be. It's the mecca, right? It is the mecca of the business, and it's a tough town. Yeah. It's a tough town. It's a tough town to... Uh, a lot of rejection, there's a lot of competition, and as a woman, it's hard to get old there. I mean, there's no doubt that it's a distorted sense of reality and a, and a deep preoccupation with youth. You know, one of the things you learn as an actor, and it takes a while to get adjusted to this, I mean years, is you realize that um, as soon as you make plans, you'll book a job. So, <laughs> and the job will be far. Uh, so, yeah, last summer I was, you know, looking around for the next thing, and this Viking script came up, and it was a miniseries. It was going to shoot in Ireland, and I knew Gabriel Byrne was attached, and I knew that yes. Michael Hurst, who had done Tudors and the Elizabeth films, was writing it. So everything about it seemed yeah. attractive, obviously. And uh, I actually put myself on tape for it, and it all happened very quickly. Some things happen quickly, and some things don't. But this one happened quickly, and before I knew it, I was on my way to Ireland for five months, and we did this nine episode, you know, epic miniseries about Vikings. And, you know, it, it was as exciting and interesting as it sounds. I think one of the biggest takeaways for me, especially for my role, based on the research that the uh, wardrobe designer did, she was, I can't even begin to articulate how intricate and uh, profound these costumes were, like nothing I've ever seen. Uh, what what she discovered was that in spite of our preconceptions of Vikings, which is that they were these filthy people who were just unkempt and raping and pillaging everywhere they went, in fact, uh, there was evidence of uh, great care in their appearance, and especially in a woman who would be, say, the wife of an earl. And they found these amazing drawings, because there's no written history, but they yeah. found these drawings of very intricate hairstyles. And... Uh, actually makeup that they would take coal and they would line their eyes and they would take a kind of like a berry stain yes. and they would stain their cheeks. And so what I loved about that was the idea that there was a public face, yes. that, that a woman would very consciously assemble an image for herself that she wanted to present to yes. her people. And that as an actress was very helpful because then I knew that I could have this public self that yes. the Earl and I would present and then we could also have our private selves which would be the complexities of our marriage and our relationships. Week. You think I'm homeless? No, I, I'm... No, it's okay. It's fine. I'm Anna. Person, a casting director invited me to read the lead and I went out and that's when I first met Jeremy and, and after the reading he was so happy with it he asked if I would play the lead which was obviously very flattering but uh, I was concerned that he would benefit from having a bigger name and so I said you know I think you should go after somebody higher profile to attract more financing and so forth 
And he insisted. He said, no, 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 it's got to be you, the way you did that reading, that's what I want. And I said, okay, well then in that case I'm going to produce it as well because I feel like you're taking a risk with me, I need to take the risk. And so I came on as a producer and together we you know, went out casting, we went out looking for financing, and we crewed up, and we went off and shot the film. What's complicated about this project for me <laughs> is that it could be perceived as a vanity project, because I produced it, I'm in it. <laughs> Except when you see it, and you see that I have, like, pimples all over my face, and I, I had to overblow my lips, and uh, she's got, obviously, image problems. Uh, she's an eating disorder. But, you know, I definitely gave myself a role. Yes. And so in that sense, you know, I, I don't want anyone to feel like, you know, bad for me because obviously I assume the risk. Yes. What I would now like to do is I would like to really be behind the camera. What I really enjoyed was creating the path for the director. Mm. I loved anticipating Jeremy's needs. I loved looking at the schedule, understanding the timing of the scenes. I didn't love raising the money. That's really difficult. But if need be, you know, our, our biggest goal is to get all our investors their money back so that we can feel comfortable going back to them and yes. saying, hey, do you guys want to try this again? Uh, you know, I just read the other day that you should be embarrassed if you use a garlic press. It's going to be like a you know martini what? or something cool. No, no, no. It's, um, I like... Um, I like the vitamin water, but every time I drink it, I feel guilty because the the bottle is so thick, like the right, plastic, the plastic. That I feel guilty, like right. I'm environmental and friendly. <laughs> I love toast. Do you really love toast? I could Okay, eat. with at least butter or something, or just plain? Oh, butter. No. Okay. So this is what I would do after school. I would... Absolutely, because you can come out. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Let's wait for this <laughs> one. Oh. oh, my gosh. This is a very intense flight path. Oh, a small one. Little small plane. plane, little plane. <laughs>